especially if you look at movies and how they display negotiations on them, negotiation is not an art. Negotiation is not something that happens in the spare of the moment, it's something that it actually requires a lot of preparation, strategy, understanding what are the topics that are going to be covered, don't get necessarily surprised during the negotiation and be able to come with proposals that are really well thought out that are going to benefit both you but also the parties that you are negotiating with. So as you can imagine, people are not born negotiators. It's something that can be developed over time um, with practice, like pretty much everything else. Hey, recently I have been listening to the book Negotiation Genius. This is a really good book. And even if it doesn't sound like the normal book that I will be reading, because usually I'm concentrate on books that are related to product creation, product management, product design, product development in general. And this is not something or a topic that is very commonly discussed within product people in tech companies. But the reality is that a lot of our work is about negotiating. It is about negotiation with our stakeholders, it's negotiation with our customers, it's negotiation with other product members. So we had to do a lot of negotiations during basically our daily lives and our daily jobs. And this is the reason why I started to read this book and looking into how can I get better at negotiating and maybe not looking from a negotiation business point of view, but looking from how can I get to better agreements and better uh, understandings with other people that I had to work with. The book has been written by, and before I even say the names, I can tell you that I'm going to butcher them, so I'm really sorry if you happen to be watching this video. It's written by Deepak Malthotra and Max Bazerman. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. And I love the tagline of the book that it talks about how to overcome obstacles and achieve brilliant results at the bargaining table and beyond. And this is something that the book talks a lot about how can you make sure that the outcome of the negotiation are the best as they can be. And this doesn't mean just for you as one of the parties, but for both parties. How can you actually make sure that both parties or all the parties involved during the negotiation are actually getting as much value as possible out of it. So I will do a little bit as I always do. I will do first a summary of the book and at the end I will do a review of what are my thoughts about the book and what did I like about it or maybe what I would like to see maybe slightly different in the book. So one of the first things introduced in the book is the negotiations toolkit or the negotiators toolkit. And some of the parts that he's talking here is about how to create value in a negotiation but also how to claim value in a negotiation. And it starts obviously with the claiming value which is probably why everybody started to read the book on the first place. You want to make sure that whenever you're in a negotiation, you get the best deal as possible. So one of the first things that is covered is that how can I get the most value out of a negotiation without being abusive towards the other parties in the negotiation. And this is something that I really appreciate in the book, that they are demonstrating a set of values on this is not about you kind of being able to win just for the sake of winning every single negotiation, you also want to be able to create that value for the rest. So it's a win-win for all the parties involved, as much as possible, obviously. In this part of the book, they are talking a lot about why negotiations fail. And this is something that is very important and I think that's very interesting is that they talk that most of the negotiations fail because of lack of preparation, because you don't know yourself. You don't even know how much you are able to claim value. You don't even know what your position is to claim that value. How are you able to be in that negotiation and actually convince the other party that what you're presenting is something that is valuable also for them. So just remember, you don't want to impose what you're trying to agree or negotiate. You want that the other party understands the value of what you're bringing into the table. And ideally, it's also bringing value for them. The book introduces many different acronyms like BATNA and SOPA which are going to help you to understand like what are the margin of negotiation that you have with other people? What would be your exit strategy? What would be your best alternative to a negotiated agreement? So although these acronyms are something that are covered within the book, it would be good to Google those terms first so you understand a little bit what they're talking about, because of course it can get quite complex if you don't know the typical jargon of negotiation. But in a nutshell, what the book is actually promoting is when you go to a negotiating table, you understand that, first of all, what is my expectation on the agreed negotiation outcome in the end? 
What do I think that is going to be this margin of area that I think that this is what I'm going to be able to agree? And what is realistic that I'm not trying to force something in the other party, but I know that there's no way that they are going to accept. So I had to be able to prepare and understand this because then when I go to the negotiation table or when I go to uh, my presentation to present my new plan or my new roadmap, I understand what the others are expecting. If they are too busy, it's unrealistic for me to ask for too many resources that I know I'm not going to get. So be able to prepare and understand a little bit the other's point of view before you go into that negotiating table is going to put you in a much better position. Also, it would be good to understand that, hey, it might be possible that there's no agreement reached. Do you have to have some kind of backup plan? What is that you are going to do in that case? Those things are important that you are able to understand it from the beginning, that you potentially already have an understanding that if this is something that this negotiation is not agreed around my plans on the roadmap, I might have an alternative because I know that this is going to be a difficult one. It might be not much margin for agreeing on that plan. Then I might have to have a backup plan that actually is more potentially realistic or easier to get to an agreement with the counterparty. And surprise, surprise, they also promote that you do post-mortem, that you actually go and analyze what went well, what went wrong, learn and adapt for the future, which is basically what Agile is promoting with Retro. So be able to understand what's going on, how can you get better, do it differently in the future. And although the negotiation goal typically is that you want to come to an agreement of what you want to do and what you want the other party to accept. Another thing that maybe is not that well perceived or not that well understood is that you also want to make sure that the relationship between yourself and your counterparts is something that is strengthening and that is getting better out of these negotiations. The other part that is talking quite much about is that how you can create value for the other party. So, uh, I'm just thinking this from a product perspective point of view. Of course, you can think it from many other ways, but from a product and a company that is developing tech, the point of view of how you are creating for value for the others, of course, for the customers is quite obvious. Uh, don't talk about features, talk about the value that these features is giving you, how they are going to make their lives better. This is something that is going to be very important for you. Another part that I found very interesting in this book is how it talks also to prepare yourself, not just for the actual negotiation, but how you can get to understand the other party better. How can you build them in a way as user personas, as we do when we try to understand our customers. You also want to be able to understand better your counterparty in the negotiations. That is going to help you a lot when going into the negotiation. Uh, understanding what are their needs, their worries, their maybe typical reactions or behaviors is going to make the conversation much easier for both of you. And also for you to be prepared for how they might be reacting in some cases. And how can you plan around these behaviors and these reactions that the other party might have? Another topic that I think that it was quite fascinating in this book is that they are talking about how confronting lies and deception in negotiations. They don't say that necessarily people lie outright, although it might happen, uh, but they say that many people might come up with something during the negotiation and come up with uh, an answer to a certain question without really knowing the real answer and potentially making a false statement. Uh, how would you be able to, or you should be reacting to that? And it depends a lot on how and what your position is and how maybe aggressive you do want to be during the negotiation, if you want to confront that directly, or if you just want to take maybe a little bit more chill approach, maybe not say bluntly that you that's a lie, but how can you also bring the facts of the reality of at least to the level that you may know to the conversation. So there's one thing that they suggest is that maybe in the very beginning of the negotiation, you could already set some kind of a, in a way a trap where you do a statement that you know that it might be wrong and see what is the reaction and if they correct it or if they just let it slide. And the reality is that many people go into negotiation tables without preparing at all. And expect this, even if you are really, really prepared yourself, some of the worst cases is not when you are really prepared and the other party is really prepared. Potentially that's the best cases when both parties understand really well, coming to an agreement, it probably would be 
the easiest cases to handle in a negotiation. If both parties are not prepared, or if one party is prepared but the other one is not prepared, the problem is that the parties that are not prepared are not going to understand what they're negotiating. And they might be causing damage not just to themselves, but also to the other party, because they might not understand the value of what you're bringing to the table. Let's say that you're a product person, again, coming back to the world of product of tech. You have a roadmap and you understand really well your customers. You already had done your discovery, you had done your validation with them, you have validated mockups and even the first prototypes with them, and you know that what you're building is on the right track and it's something that your customers need. If the other party, for whatever reasons, come not prepared to the table and come with a great idea that they would like to explore these new features that they would love to build and we should go and go and go and do this because there's maybe a very big customer asking for it, but without really having research if this is a valid problem or if this is a problem that is going to benefit many people if solved, then you might end up in a situation when a party is actually pre very prepared, the other party is more working or coming with uh, ideas out of their gut, and then you end up with a situation that it's probably difficult to handle for both parties. And it might end up in a compromise decision which most likely is not going to benefit either of the parties, not going to benefit the customers, not going to benefit the business. And then the reality is that you also are going to go into negotiations where you are in a position of weakness. So your product, for example, is not receiving the biggest attention or the biggest investment in the company, and then you are negotiating from that weakness position. So the best thing that you have on your side is that potentially you understand that you are in a weak position. And understand that and try to plan from that kind of position of weak. And you don't have to go to the table by just blasting that I'm in a weak position. That's probably not going to help you. What you have to do again is focusing again on your value proposition. What is that you're bringing value to your customers and how can you leverage that? How can you make that not seem bigger, but how is that better potentially that other products within the company that might be getting more uh, investment? How is your value proposition unique and distinctive from those other ones? Being able to contrast that might get more attention into your product. And I'm not saying that you should try to force it because of course the company might have a strategy, it might be difficult to get that done. But in any case, it's always very important that you understand that your position might be weak and how can you leverage that position. So the book goes through many cases and through many stories. Actually, they take uh, one story to a historical one to explain a case where somebody negotiated in a certain way or another. I think that this is really valuable and very interesting. I like the approach very much. They take uh, uh, historical figures and actually cases that are relatively known. Some of them, of course, some others are not going to be very known if you're not in the business, in the business world, but it's actually something that I appreciate a lot and I think that it kind of gives you that kind of ground that, hey, this is something that people have gone through and how they have gone through it in the past. I also love that they talk about a lot about being prepared, planning. Make sure that when you go to the table, you understand what you're talking about and not that you go there and improvise yourself. Unfortunately, I've seen too many of those ones and it's something that it's usually you don't end up reaching very good agreements. I think that one of the key takeaways for me in this book is that negotiation is not about me winning and the other one losing. Some people love that, that they beat the other one and that they actually are the winning party. I think that that's a problem because then you actually break the relationship in general. Their trust is not gonna stay there for a long time when you kind of deal with that kind of situation so far. So successful negotiations is about making a situation or an environment where both parties can win, with both, where both parties feel that they have reached an agreement that it makes sense for both of them and both of them are going to get value. Trust is key. Without trust, the negotiation probably is not going to be great and it's not going to go that well. So something that you have to pay attention is that how can you be trustworthy also with your other party and make sure that you understand that trust has to be earned and it has to be earned also from your side. So if you offer trust first, in case that the other party is not offering trust first, that is going to be easier for them to start trusting you and potentially uh, 
reciprocated. Negotiating with people that have not experienced in negotiations usually is going to end up bad. And you can see it all the time. Like if I don't know how to try to get to an agreed roadmap, probably my roadmap or the agreed roadmap in the end is not going to be great. And the same happens with the other parties that have to agree on the roadmap or the initiatives that we are trying to achieve. So the better case is that you are working with experienced people in the other party of, or the other side of the negotiation, that they are also coming pre prepared and that they understand what you are trying to achieve as well. And the book also, because negotiation sometimes, especially when you think about movies, is a lot of manipulation and kind of trying to make points of views or realities that are not quite real and try to convince the other with this kind of tricks, the book is actually discouraging all that kind of behavior, which in my opinion is something that is very important. I value it a lot. I don't like when people try to trick others and I appreciate a lot that the book and the authors are taking a stand on that uh, topic. So I think that for me as a summary, I think that the book is great. It's kind of strange to read from a perspective of a person working in tech and especially in the product creation process. We don't tend to understand our interactions with others as negotiations. And probably there we are wrong as tech people and I think that we could actually get a lot of value of reading books like this. Maybe also one thing that the book kind of made me feel is that everything out there is a negotiation and honestly I don't think that everything out there is negotiation the same as not everything out there is a product and a way to create value all the time. Sometimes well things in life can be different and sometimes things in life are just to be enjoyed and just to be lived through them and not necessarily everything has to be a learning experience and everything has to be on me planning and calculating everything. So we also had to find a little bit of a balance, but when it comes to work, I think that it makes a lot of sense to think about some situations more of as, as a negotiation. And I think that an important topic related to this is that not everything is a negotiation and not everything has to be handled as negotiation, even within work, even if you could consider that everything could be done that way. So for example, when you are talking with uh, your team members, no matter if you are the manager or you are a team member and you're talking with your leader, you don't have to see all those interactions as negotiations, even if they potentially could be seen. Sometimes it's better just to prioritize what is important to deal as a negotiation and what is just a normal, regular interaction with other people. So just try to prioritize and see where you can concentrate and where you can actually plan properly and treat those cases as negotiations. Treat those big things as negotiations. You're going to go to a planning session, treat that potentially as a negotiation. You are going to go to a presentation or a proposal for a roadmap, treat that as a negotiation. But maybe when you're doing more of day-to-day uh, -day regular task, maybe not necessarily treat that as negotiation. And I think that always try to learn from what you have done, no matter if it went well or if it went wrong, try to have retrospectives that help you understand uh, what worked, what you could try in the future, how can you learn. So try to take that uh, build, measure, learn approach that Eric Rice is proposing all the time in the Lean Startup. So my very last thoughts on the book, uh, the book is maybe not the simplest one to read for somebody that is very heavy on product because it's not your typical book to read. There is a lot of acronyms that probably will keep you lost a little bit in the beginning of the book and you're going to have to Google them several times. Uh, that's kind of normal when you are going into an area that you have not explored too much. But I think that as a product person, we should be learning all the time. And we should be learning on other topics that potentially we don't see them as core part of our skill set, but most likely are going to help us a lot to do our job. So, Negotiation Genius, definitely go check it out. I will leave the link down below in the description and also in the pinned comment. It's a really interesting book and in my opinion it's definitely worth to give it a try. I've been reviewing other books, most of them related to product, product creation, product development. Go check them out in that playlist. I will see you in the next one and remember, stay safe.